Welcome back, y'all. We are going on to part two of our Ancient Oils mini-series. Series. And we're going to talk about galbanum. Galbanum. Okay. So this is, this is an oil that I had never heard of before. Yeah. Um, but it is referenced in the Bible. We found it. It's part of the um, holy incense. And I'm like, what is it? Well, it's, it's a plant that's actually related to uh, carrots, to celery, mm -hmm. to parsley. And when you smell this oil, you will go, oh my gosh, yeah. I totally get Little those. Grassy, herby. It does have some grassy notes. I'll, you know, I'll talk about that. Um, but it's very earthy um, mm -hmm. and it's a little bitter. You know, it's, it's not in a bad way, but um, kind of like bitter orange, how that's a little bitter. It's kind of like that. You know, it has a lot of complexity. Yeah. And of course, incense, perfume, you know, that's what the, the ancients used uh, this for. So you want to tell us a bit about the plant? Because it's kind of a funky yeah. plant. Well, and I think that was a lot of descriptive words you used. And I think that's because it's from the plant, which is actually quite tall, and it sort of umbrellas out and these pretty yellow flowers. Um, it's from the stem, but not the stem, from the root, but not the root. It's actually the gum resin of this plant. And they make little cuts kind of... Uh, at the top of the root ball or near the base of the stem, like they would a frankincense or a myrrh, um, and it, you know, the gum resin comes out and crystallizes, and then they harvest the gum resin. So it does have a lot. It has some of the greenness of the plant. It has some of the earthiness. Um, it has some of that ancient resinous scent that we also get in frankincense and myrrh. And like Dominic said, this is a plant that was... Um, Famous in the ancient world, it was one of the, the prized incense treasures of a lot of the ancient civilizations um, because it was so powerful, um, powerful for the, the thought body state. And it was also, Dominic mentioned that it was uh, used in the Bible. It's mentioned only one time in Exodus 30, 34. Uh, galbanum was part of the incense blend that the Lord required, asked of the priest to make for the entrance into the holy place. And it was mixed with uh, stock tea, which they're not quite sure what that is. It's a gum resin, maybe myrrh. And onica, which is some kind of a, a shell. They're not exactly sure what that is either. And it was powdered. And then the galbanum and then frankincense added. And it would have been the resin, so it would have been ground up and then uh, uh, lit as it were to smoke, and that was the entrance into the holy place. And the Lord actually said, uh, do not use, make this blend of yourself, uh, it's for me only. I'm glad we don't know what the <laughs> other two things are then. Right, we don't have those. <laughs> but we can definitely benefit from galbanum and use it, um, and really to help get to a, a, a higher plane of consciousness, as it were, to help enter into um, a, a meditative state or um, a higher thought train or something, level up, <laughs> um, to, to enter into a dwelling place or a holy place or prayer or something like that, whatever you like to do. And so this is one that you can use to really... Um, we talked about during the pandemic when we were doing church at home, we're like, it was so different because when you go to church, there's that setting your mind in preparation for the thing you're about to do. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that for galvanum. So this will help set your mind for the thing that you're about to do and help you enter into that space, that revered space, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Cool, and to kind of round that out, in the diffuser, awesome mm -hmm. place to use galvanum, and it blends really well with florals. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, rose, um, jasmine, you know, any of those kind of things, any kind of floral you really like, um, it's going to bring those earthy notes, that mm -hmm. grounding uh, sense to the aroma. Mm -hmm. So really, um, and other ways to use it, it's very cleansing. Why? Mm -hmm. Monoterpene dominated chemistry. Almost all the oil is, is monoterpenes mm -hmm. of various kinds. But we have some other cool stuff in there. And so to kind of round this out, I want to just finish talking about the chemistry. And there's quite yeah. a bit. Um, so if, I'm going to start talking about um, this group of compounds. It's about 1% of the oil called coumarins. Okay. And it's not to be confused with turmeric. It's actually the grassy scent. So when you cut alfalfa, for example, and you have that wonderful smell that we all know and love of freshly cut grass, mm -hmm. that's actually related to the, the coumarins family oh, um, okay. of compounds. And it's, it's ketone. Mm -hmm. So again, a cleansing compound uh, in its own right. 
Um, and that's really what's providing a lot of the aroma of this oil hmm. is, is uh, pyrazine, is the name of the, the compound of, um, in there. Now, we have nitrogen chemistry in this oil. What does that Why mean? haven't I talked about that before? <laughs> Um, uh -huh. nit nitrogen compounds tend to be a lot more water soluble. So when you go through the steam distillation, you lose it. You lose it to the hydrosol, you mm -hmm. know, the water that comes off the, the distillation water. process. Um, again, they distill this uh, gum resin to make the oil. Mm -hmm. So, but we do have quite a bit of nitrogen containing compounds in this essential oil, and that really impacts the aroma. Um, we mm. see this also in jasmine, in coriander, in celery seed. You get some nitrogen compounds in there and giving, you know, kind of, when you smell this oil, you'll, you'll think about some of those things. Um, nitrogen chemistry could also be related to flowering plants with white flowers, not colored. They think the mm. nitrogen actually helps uh, with the white color. That's why the jasmine's in there. Interesting. So, uh, really cool. Um, you have some esters, you have some sesquiterpenols. can't talk well today. Sesquiterpenols. Yeah. You know, ses you sesquiterpenes, <laughs> but with a, fin uh, a phenol, a benzene ring, and alcohol group hanging off there. Um, but like I said, monoterpenes. And what do we have here? We have beta pinene. Whoa! Not alpha pinene. Not alpha. Beta so, pinene. Yeah, so alpha pinene, frankincense, myrtle, we're going to talk about that soon. Mm -hmm. Um, we have beta pinene. What does the beta refer to? It refers to where the double bond is in the molecule. So um, pinene is a hexagon ring, and then there's like a little square quadrilateral. You can think of it hanging off of there and some other atoms, um, carbon. But it's where the double bond is. So in alpha, it's in the ring. Okay. In beta, it's on a, a methyl group hanging off the ring. Okay, and so what does that do? It's cleansing. It's a monoterpene. It's like all monoterpenes. It's just a different uh, pinene. It's a different okay. form of pinene. And the alpha, the beta, refers to where the double bond is located. Okay. So it has to do with the naming conventions. So don't get hung up on there. They're very similar. You know, um, pinene is going to do similar things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that that's kind of a big dump on the, on the chemistry. There's a lot going on here. But unfortunately, yeah. you know, galvanum is... Correct me if I'm wrong. It was only available mm -hmm. in kind of this um, oil. in this single oil. You know, DoTerra does yeah. not use it, and I think it's because it's very hard for them to source. Yes. So there's actually a little bit of a cool sourcing story on that. It is most of the world source right now is in Iran, and many people cannot uh, export from Iran right now. Um, so. Emily Wright, one of the founders of the company, was sharing that she was in Oman sourcing uh, one of the frankincense um, uh, varietals. varietals there. Thank you, the word. <laughs> Chemotype, one of the frankincense there, and was talking, and the guy said, oh, yes, I know a guy who's growing it in Turkey. And so they've been able to find galbanum, and it's what rounds out the ancient oils collection, which at the moment is still available. But also, the galbanum is available single, at the moment, um, and I have to tell you all that this is my favorite. I was really tempted to buy more ancient oil collections just for the galbanum. I don't know why, because I know I saw a lot of people smelling it at convention, and their first smell was kind of like, ugh, because it definitely it has a little bit of must musk, but not that much. Um, it is think about earthy, car carrots but in a cellar. Yeah, like that's what it sounds like. You yeah. walk into a, a but root cellar, fresh yeah. and cleansing. Well, like I talked about, it's that grassy, yeah. grassy note um, too. So with that, I love it in the diffuser by itself. I think it just smells amazing. Just a couple of drops will fill the space nicely. But it's also what's known as a fixative. In, it's used in perfume blends. Again, it was also used a lot in the ancient world um, in perfume blends as well. And uh, you could use it the same. And it, a fixative, it basically kind of holds the blend. It helps the others from sort of flashing off or evaporating quickly, it but kind of... Reduces the vapor pressure. Oh, uh, reduces the vapor pressure. This is why I have him around, y'all, because it reduces the vapor pressure. Oh, I'm sorry. It actually increases it. <laughs> or, other uh, way like, oh, man. <laughs> he, he does this to me all the time. Um, anyway, so you could use it as blending um, or just enjoy it by itself. No, it was the right first time. It reduces... Yeah. Oh Correct me. Get in the comments because my brain's not working. We've, we had a long trip a couple days ago. We're still recovering from that. But yeah. Yeah, there you go. Hopefully, um, 
lots of information on galbanum and we hope you pick it up and smell it and like i say get in the yeah. comments let us know what your impressions are of the scent and the aroma and how um what yeah. time of day you like to diffuse it you yeah know? and i think y'all will really enjoy this one i hope you do i really enjoy it and any questions let us know otherwise we're gonna go on to the next one in our little mini series hiss up hiss up next time hiss up thank you bye y'all